And today we have, uh, excuse me, my voice is going today, uh, a brand new guest, um, Mrs. Jennifer Bell Castro with Berkshire Hathaway. She's been in the real estate business for about a year and a half right now. And this year she's on pace to crack 20 plus transactions it, in almost her first full year. So uh, we're, we're excited to have her on, to have her share with her what she did this year to be able to produce that amount of transactions. But before we get to Jennifer, Ruth, what is happening in the real estate market? John wanted to listen to the show, but I can't get uh, I can't get it to work for him for some reason. I don't know, honey. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put everybody in the lobby while I bring up the statistics. And welcome, Jennifer. And hello, Thank Max. You. Good to see everybody. All right. What's happening in Las Vegas? Well, the big news is, if you haven't heard my show earlier in the week, um, Applied Analysis came out and told us they're the um, the company that does all the statistics uh, for the LVR, the Las Vegas Board of Realtors. And what they said is that our median price home has jumped up to 421,000. That's good, I guess, if you, uh, <laughs> if you were looking to have more equity in your home. It does put a, some of the first time home buyers probably out of the market a little bit, but the interest rates are still low, so that's good news. And the, uh, if you bought a home in the beginning of the year, you have gained about fifty to sixty thousand in equity just this year, which is phenomenal. Uh, congratulations! You know, uh, uh, we always uh, we always say buy real estate and wait. Don't wait to buy real estate because it always goes up over time. Anyway, we have twenty six days of inventory, and we have six hundred and eight homes right now in the medium price range of 400,000 and below actually. And 41 were listed yesterday, 400 and below, which is good. That keeps the, I always say the market's churning. We sell, we, we sell and we list, we sell and we list. So there's always new things to look at. We listed 116 uh, high rises, condos, single family homes and townhomes yesterday. We put 85 under contract. We closed 146 homes and uh, we have 3,281 available in those three, four categories. Now um, we are on par, probably I would say we're going to make the average daily of 140 sales uh, by the end of this month. Right now we're at 133 sales a day. Um, competing with last year's numbers, we are a little bit behind. We were doing 141 last year in December, and we're doing 133 sales uh, this year. So anyway, um, we're, we're still knocking it out of the ballpark. I don't see that this market is going to change at all. We have the millennials coming on board, buying homes. We have uh, people moving here at the rate of 139 a day. That's five people move here every hour and it doesn't, it's not letting up. So I think for Las Vegas market is going to continue to be a hot market. And um, like I said, if you plan to buy a home in 2022, start your search now. And if you want to sell your home in, and you're worried that you're not going to be able to find a home because of the low inventory, the agents out there are now uh, finding you a home before you put your home on the market. And so that's, uh, that's the secret sauce. Uh, it's the agents have learned how to do that. We've got lots of programs and applications for them to do that for you. So if you're thinking of selling your home, but worried that you might not be able to find a home, a good agent can find you a home. So let's bring uh, Max, Marketing Max back to the screen. And we have today a agent who is an excellent agent and she's gonna let us know how she became so successful this year. All right. Let's hope it goes right. Come on. Come on. There we go. Yeah. And the, the good news and bad news is uh, the new inflation numbers came out for the month of November this year. So the year over year inflation rate is now at 6.8%. Mm -hmm. So that means all prices of goods and services for the most part have risen by 6.8% just to due to the natural inflation rate. So that affects real estate as well. 
And going into next year, I mean, it looks like inflation is going to be at this level. So, you know, expect a minimum of 6% uh, rise in the home prices going into 2022 here. So Ruth's absolutely right. You <laughs> don't want to wait to buy real estate if you're looking for especially a primary home right now. Uh, you want to buy real estate and wait. So we'll dig deeper into that with our guest today, uh, Jennifer Belcastro. Bella Bel Castro, correct? Yes, Bel with Castro. Berkshire Hathaway. We're excited to have you on the show today. Thanks for coming on. Uh, the Thank very you. first question I always ask our guest, Jennifer, is uh, are you a Las Vegas native? Give us a little bit of background about yourself, what you did before real estate and how you got here. Um, I call myself a native because I've been here since I was six, but I'm originally from New Brunswick, New Jersey. Um, I've been in the casino industry all my life. I still use it as my side gig, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. But I, you know, I've been executives in um, major casinos, MGM, Venetian, whatnot. And so um, when I decided to get into real estate, I felt that I had a good start because of my sphere and my sales ability. And uh, the truth of the matter is Ruth uh, encouraged me on that. Um, when I first started real estate, believe it or not, I used to come to Ruth's office every Friday and did the Brian Buffini and, and so, oh, so forth. Okay. And her and John were really helpful. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. So uh, what made you go into like, I mean, outside of, you know, knowing that you had the sales skills in the background, what, what like gravitated you to, to actually doing real estate itself? You know, all my life, people told me I should have been a realtor. Or real estate. <laughs> and I was like, no, because I would I was the type of person that I'd get my feelings hurt if you didn't list your house with me. Mm. <laughs> so um I just one day decided that I wanted to branch out because I always invested in real estate um, all my life. I've always flipped homes and I always found it intriguing. As a matter of fact, a, a good story for everyone listening is when I was married um, to my first husband who passed away, we used to go knock on doors in Rancho Circle and ask people if we could buy their palm trees because they're so expensive. They're like five, you know, big they go by the trunk size right? and we go, can we buy your tree for a thousand dollars? They'd be like, you want to buy our tree? Yeah. We want to buy your tree. So we would pay someone to crane it and we'd like upgrade properties based on the palm trees. And it was amazing. <laughs> so, so Jennifer, I have to jump in here. Uh, um, and Max, we have had Jennifer's son on this show. Oh, wait a minute here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Brandon, yeah, uh, Brandon on, right? Yeah, oh, Brandon fantastic. Yeah. Braden. Braden. Right. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Okay. Anyway, he told you to get into real estate. I remember this story too. That's the story yeah. he tells. I told my mother to get into real estate. So we have to give him credit. Oh, fantastic. I thought you looked familiar uh, <laughs> when you were on. I was like, wait a minute. She looks familiar. Yeah. Uh, now, now I see it. Now yes. <laughs> yeah. How, how is Braden doing these days? With he's school great. And he's doing great now. He thinks he's going to be a bodybuilder. He's in super great oh. shape. Okay. He, um, it's pretty amazing. He's lost like 43 pounds and he's 13. <laughs> he's, and he's wow. five nine now. He's pretty impressive. Wow. Well, th this is the hormone push right now that he's going through right now. So his body's going to change. His, his, vo his voice has probably already changed, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he's ready to crack he and stuff like that. Five days a week and all he cares about is real estate. He, uh, he talks about oh. real estate. Mom, did you get a deal today? What, what's going on with there the clothing? Go. Like, Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to have him on the show again, Max. Uh, yeah, well, Max, sure. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Just to see his transformation, where what he's thinking about now and going to the next, you know, four or five years. I mean, he just gonna... can't wear his hat. And I'm not even gonna mention the I know. Name. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. We got blacklisted that for that show. <laughs> too bad, well, that was so, a really a good show, too. It was. Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah, a really good show. But so I mean, let, let's talk about your transition here into to real estate um, as a professional selling and helping uh, clients here. So you told us before the show that you're you know on pace, if not already you know done over 20 transactions this year, you're a year and a half in, which is incredible, right? You're already beating the average real estate agent who only does like what one transaction a month, Ruth. I mean, you're almost doubling the the average real estate. Uh, and you've only been doing it for a year and a half. Tell us a little bit about, you know, what you think, if you look back into the last year and a half here, what are some key things that made you successful? Well, there's a lot of things. Um, one is I'm a people person. So I think showing people you care 
Um, it's not just about listing someone's home or selling them a home. It's a relationship building process. Um, I branded myself as a concierge real estate agent. And where I got that idea was because I was a casino host all my life. So I mm -hmm. catered to high rollers, which I still do that on the side. I consult on the side. And so I felt why someone's going to say, why use Jennifer? You know, 15 other agents. So why, why Jennifer, right? You probably mm -hmm. know right. now, you probably know tons of agents because you've been doing the show. But, <laughs> right. but, you know, I mean, so why, why use Jennifer? So I stage homes, I become your admin assistant. If you're someone from California and you're buying sight unseen, which I've done three of those this year that have been successful, which that's a, that's a hard one. You know, it could be, it could be sticky. Um, sure. I go out there and I'll video the home for the buyer. And I will also like, if it's RV parking, I actually measure if it's 10 feet because just because it says it's RV parking doesn't mean an RV can, you know, fit in there. Fit in there, right? So I do a little extra things for my clients if they need me to pick up their boxes at their door when they're out of town. I do that. Um, but I just build relationships. And so I think it's really important how you market the property if you're um, listing the property. I think that's important marketing. And just getting your name out there and getting you know your clients listing out there um, with other realtors so that, that they can show your property. So I feel that the customer service has always been a big part of my life. And so I just think you know, listening to your client, whether it's the seller, the buyer, listening to their wants and needs, because it's not always about money. You know, sometimes, right, right. you know, it's a divorce or they want to rent back or there's all different dynamics. And so you have to listen to what they're saying. It's not about you. It's about them. Right, right. So let me unpack this a little bit here so <clears throat> I can give you some direction on um, like the first hundred days in real estate. If you recall, you know, when you did the day that you decided to do real estate, what did you do like the first hundred days? I know you mentioned a little bit going to Ruth's office on Friday. Uh, so walk us through that. You know, I was a hot mess. <laughs> yes, 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 you were. Um, if I'm going to be candid with everybody. <laughs> yes, I please be candid. Um, she was I, scared I, half to death. <laughs> I, I mean, it's like having a toolbox and you don't have all your tools or they're all unorganized everywhere. And then mm -hmm. you're trying to go here and there and everywhere. So um, the first, God, it's kind of embarrassing to say, but it's the truth. Um, I don't know. I, the first hundred days, I was very curious. I was skeptical. Skeptical. I was very mm -hmm. leery. of. I didn't know how to do the paperwork. Um, I didn't really, I let people walk on me. Ruth um, is very well aware of a situation I went through. I mean, I showed somebody without even doing a buyer's brokerage agreement, 30 homes, and I ended up not selling them a home. So mm -hmm. I... I don't know. I think I did some things wrong. So if I could tell you what I've fine tuned for this year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so tell us, I mean, a little, I mean, I, I we love the mistakes because everybody needs to hear it. Right. Because yeah, we can all learn, learn from the mistakes, right? We actually learn more from the mistakes <laughs> than we learn from the successes in our life, you know, in every aspect. So, so uh, yeah. So, I mean, what, when was the transition, right, from being a hot mess to like finally going, from my I kind of get this, right? Max, so. From my perspective, when Jennifer, when Jennifer, like she said in the beginning, it's not about you, it's about them. Mm -hmm. However, however, what I saw Jennifer do is understand she can control the situation and Correct. still make it about them. That was your turning point, Jennifer. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, so Jennifer, elaborate on that. And then, you know, from your perspective. Uh, what, what the turning point was? Yeah. Uh, I think after I had a client, a casino client that I sold a home to in February and um, I was, he, how do I say this? He's never been married. So I'm going to give you a description. How about that? Okay. He's yeah, never yeah. been married. Yeah, got it. He doesn't have children and he's an engineer. <laughs> so if you can understand the dynamic of that personality. Uh, okay. Right, right. We all laugh because we're all in the sales business and we understand <laughs> that personality. <laughs> so I was like, wow. Okay. So I have to fine tune things, be professional, not be a hot mess. <laughs> right. Be precise. And, and, and again, listening because mm -hmm. 
he knows what he wants and that's that mm -hmm. there's no if ands about it so i think that was um and that was one of my sight and scenes as well so once i went through that i realized i had to um get organized mm -hmm. and my time management and do things a little bit differently as far as you know when you're talking to someone speaking to someone what their wants and needs are so again hearing writing it down listening not talking all the time because i talk a lot <laughs> right right we all do that's so, part of our personality um, and then i just i mean i i don't want to sound arrogant but i really didn't even try that hard this year I swear. <laughs> well, you, you probably because there's probably work, right? I, I want to headline that uh, comment for you, Jennifer. I mean, you know, when when we're in what we call flow, right? There's a book called Flow, and when we're in flow, it seems like we're not doing a lot of work, right? But we oh, are no, doing. I didn't work, say I didn't do right? a lot of work. Or I mean, you didn't. Try, I mean, it seems like no effort or a little amount of effort is is being pushed, but probably a lot of effort. No, I, I that's maybe I didn't word it correctly. How about this? Like, I'm in a mastermind group right now. Mm -hmm. And there's probably people in my group that are looking to be listening to this and they're going to be mad at me. But I get a text every single day, morning and at night that we're supposed to say how many people we contacted, how many appointments we did. Fantastic. Um, if, yeah. But if you know my personality, I'm going, oh, my gosh, like I do things a little differently. So I have to try to adapt to my group because mm -hmm. I was selected to be in this group. So I have to, you know, do what I'm supposed to do. So. I guess when I see these people saying they contacted 20 people a day and I write two, <laughs> they're probably like, what's wrong with this girl? <laughs> but I do it a little differently. I, I right. go and network with people and it's not about like cold calling, all cold calling. There's all different methods. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I can expand on that if you want me to. Yeah. Yeah. Please do. Like, okay. please do. So, I mean, you want to talk too much. <laughs> So, no, no, that's why this you're is here. a self. Yeah, exactly. This okay. is why you're here. Okay, we so, got to fill some air times. <laughs> so, for example, um, I have a great sphere. I've mm -hmm. been in town a long time. My family's been around a long time, and I just contact people just to say hello, not necessarily to ask them about their house. And it comes up. You don't mm -hmm. really need to ask. It, sure, it comes sure. up, especially right now, right? You know. Um, I also, let me see what else. Okay. Like I make lunch, I make a lunch date once a week with someone. And last week I went to Red Rock Country Club with a friend that lives in Red Rock Country Club. And she heard me on the phone talking about real estate. I'm like, I'm so sorry, but you know, I'm, you know, I have to answer this call and, you know, I'm sitting there with her and I feel bad. And literally when I hung up the phone, she goes, my in-laws want to buy a house on Red Arrow. That Ruth knows where that's at because she lives in Red Rock. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was like, oh, really? And she's like, yeah, if you can find me a single story um, in Red Arrow, they'll spend up to 2.5 million. You can list their house and sell them a new one. I said, seriously? And she said, yeah, like I listen to you on the phone. You're amazing. And I was like, wow. <laughs> so like that, I, I I just went to go have lunch with her. You know what I mean? Just not even right. about any of this. Right. And it just comes up. So now what I'm going to do, so I'm going to share this tip that I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to farm all the single stories on Red Arrow. And I'm going to come up with, uh, you know, a postcard, a nice one, a glossy one, and say that I have someone interested to buy your home because I do. They want right. a single story updated on Red Arrow. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so Jennifer, I teach uh, a little bit about what you're talking about. And uh, I think I even said a little bit about that in the beginning of the show. I would recommend that uh, you do a CMA for every single story. You put it in a hand uh, addressed envelope with a little sticky note or with a, with a letter de describing your buyer and even using their first names and that they would like to see the house if you know they're interested in selling. Get down to it. Give okay. them all the information they need. Don't do a postcard. Do a nice letter okay. and do, include a CMA of their house. Now you've given them everything they need to know. Here's how much money. Here's the value. Here's the equity. I'm going to get out of this house. And then here's a buyer to buy it. Okay. 
if, if you great. target into it, then you're going to save yourself a lot of time and grief. Yeah. Yeah. And then if okay. you can do a reverse lookup and get their phone number and do a follow-up yes. call, that would even be better. You, you know, and so. you can use BEN verified to get phone numbers. Um, you can also use Vulcan 7 uh, to get phone numbers. That's another application. And uh, there's a couple out there that are pretty good. And even some title companies I know, um, I think it was Equity Title, they'll run a special application to try to get phone numbers. Yeah, I work with Equity because Berkshire and Equity are partners. Yeah. Perfect. So how, how long did it take you in, when you decided to get your license to sell your, to do your tr first transaction? Uh, well, it was over COVID. So I didn't start until the 1st of July. And my first transaction was, I want to say August. Okay. Wow. I mean, <laughs> the next month. Okay. Uh, that's quick. Uh, so, so tell us a little but bit. I, where... I, tell you this, I can't say names, right? but I always have a great story and a great laugh. If you ever want to call me just to laugh, I'll always have a funny story for you. I can't say who it is, uh -huh. but my first transaction was a criminal. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> uh, so yeah. so let's, let's talk about that really, not, not, not the criminal part, but uh, uh, your transactions and where you're getting your, you know, part, one, one of the most difficult parts of this business is, is building a list of qualified buyers and sellers, right? Prospecting. Yes. Uh, once you master that, then this, every game and every business becomes easy. So where are you focusing on your, your marketing and your prospecting right now to continue to keep your pipeline full going in, you know, to close the amount of transactions that you did and then also going to 2022 here? I'm going to do more phone calls, um, not necessarily cold calling, but to people that I know and asking people, asking, saying, mm -hmm. do you have anyone that you know that wants to list their, their property or purchase a home? Um, let me share with you what I provide for my services what I do different, you know, than the person that you might've been speaking right. to before. Um, so I'll definitely be doing that. I will look also into, I've never believed in door knocking just so you know, mm -hmm. but I'm going to give it a shot if it's the right <laughs> area, <laughs> because my group is really hard on me about that. Cause there, you know, a lot of people are successful with it. Um, and again, just networking with the right groups of people, and just asking, you just have to ask, you know, in a certain way. And mm -hmm. for instance, like I gave away Christmas gifts to certain people and those certain people are on my target for next year. And mm -hmm. I, it wasn't to buy them. It was sure. letting them know I was thinking of them. Right. So I, I know that, you know, someone that you don't talk to in a long time and they randomly get something from you is, is a nice gesture. You know, mm -hmm. so they think of your acts of kindness. Um, also I will probably do more farming. I know like there's people go back and forth on farming, but I feel getting your name out there is just the big thing, getting your name out there. Sure. So I, here's what I would tell you and Ruth can attest to this too. I mean, there's many ways to be successful in real estate, right? The, from the door knocking to the open houses, to the farming, to the uh, postcards to social media, to everything. And I think, you know, Gary V, you know, both Ruth and I really followed Gary V over the last few years is you got to recognize where your strength is, right? Where you're really good at and what you really like to do, right? Just because one, one person in your mastermind group is, you know, being very successful cold calling, but you hate it with a passion. And every time you get on the phone, it takes three, four five times the amount of energy to do that you're probably not going to be successful, especially in the very beginning, right? Um, so you want to build some momentum where you're doing things that you love. And I love what the approach you have. So, I mean, I wanted to unpack just a little bit here. So it sounds like what I love what I hear you saying is that I'm like you, right? If I can go to a networking event and be in a room of 50 qualified buyers and sellers versus making 50 phone calls, I'm going to go to the networking event, right? Just because you're, you're, you're in that space already. And if you like that space, and you are good at, you know, working a room and, 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 you know, presenting yourself in person, I think you do more of that. Right. And, and I would suggest that you take a look at the last, you know, the, the 20 plus transactions you had this year and really unpack where you got the business from, where you did know, the majority think, of your business come from? I think too, is I'm not in competition with anybody. I'm mm -hmm. in competition with myself. Absolutely. And I'm not trying to say I made a million dollars this year. 
I'm just doing what I need to do. And I think it just unfolds. I mm-hmm. think that's, I really believe that. I think sometimes when you push things sometimes too much, if you let things come to you, it just happens. So I'll be honest, I'm not trying to be the number one realtor in Las Vegas. I'm not trying to be, I'm, I'm happy where I'm, what I'm doing sure. and I'm happy where I'm at. I had a very epic year in both yeah. my casino and real estate business. And I'm proud of myself for that. So now I'm going to work on myself a little bit and, uh, but time management, I've been doing that for the last three months. I've been getting up earlier, um, writing things down. I journal. Um, I, ha- I even have a board in my bathroom because like I have bad ADHD and so I'm all over the place. And so I, <laughs> when I think of something, I have to write it down, you know? Right. There you go. So, but yeah, I mean, I think networking, I don't, I don't mind a cold call cause I'm not afraid. Um, mm-hmm. the only thing is, and again, cause I'm very, uh, upfront that whole thing of saying, hi, this is Jennifer Belcastro. I'm calling from Berkshire Hathaway, you know, one, two, three main street sold just the other day. Like, no, like, <laughs> like I, you can say, you can do it a different way. You can make Absolutely. it a different way, you know? And so I'll probably do that a little bit more, um, just to get out there. But it, basically I've just been working my sphere. And I think if you build your sphere, so my recommendation to everyone that's listening mm-hmm. is try it instead of per day, say every week you're going to add two people. Don't make it five, make it two. Cause if it's five, that's great. If it's two, add two people to your sphere every single week. And then that's going to multiply and multiply and multiply. And I think if you build your sphere, I think you will become very successful. 100% because the magic number is a thousand qualified buyers and sellers, right? If you build your sphere to a thousand people, I mean, you'll never have to prospect new people right. ever again. Uh, no, I, that's absolutely right, Jennifer. I mean, if, if you unpack, if you look at back at the last, you know, your 20 plus transactions this year, where, where did, can you think about where the, the, the transactions came from? Like what led those clients to you? Hmm. Okay. So my bold personality, um, one, um, okay. So I have a friend that didn't list with me and her house was on the market for 93 days. And we went for drinks one night and I said, uh, you can tell me to stay in my lane. Um, but can I give you some recommendations on your listing? You know, and you're not, I'm not going to say anything bad about another realtor, Mm -hmm. but I could see how it could improved to help sell okay. home. Yeah. And so ironically, she had the same feeling that I did. And so then at that point, um, her, her listing expired because she only did a three month and she let me list her home and I sold it in three days because I staged wow. it. I staged it. And I said to her, I'll pay for half of the staging because that's how much I believe in staging. And then she ended up paying for the whole thing. And then I got a referral from her. Okay. She was happy with my services. Another example is I listed a house in Summerlin, sold that house in three days too. I don't know what this magic three is, but. Um, so, then I'm her, sorry to interrupt, Jennifer. I want to, where did you get that listing that you just sold in Summerlin? Um, she is my, no, my son, Brayden. Brayden told her, my mom should sell your house. <laughs> From school or like no so her her okay her sister's son is friends with my son okay and so we all became friends because the sisters hang out all the time and since i go over there and hang out as well i've met the sister so then she invited me to her 50th birthday party the sister through my son's relationship so then i went and then i do these magazines and i sent her a magazine in the mail and one day my son was at her house with the sister and said, you want to list your house? My mom should list your house. My mom's a great realtor. She's like, I know, right? She said, so <laughs> I listed her house because Brayden. Right. So, you know, Brayden had his hand out a little bit, but that's okay. Hey. Um, <laughs> so Brayden helped me with that. And then okay. I sold her house in three days and she was, I put the sold on the sign and her neighbor down the street came over and said, oh, my God, you sold your house so quick. Your agent must be really good. She's like, oh, my God, she's amazing. You have to meet her. She's full of energy, blah, 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 blah. And she's like me, too. So she's like, ah, oh, excited. And so then I listed her house. So then I sold her house, um, not in three days, but I think I sold it in like, I don't know, a week. And uh, 
we got 10,000 more, the exact same model. Um, another thing, I'm ADDing it now. Yeah, Showing right. up to your appraisals is super important, super. And I'm a master at it. Right. What do you, what do you mean by that? Like, well, what's the benefit? <laughs> okay. I have to politically correct say this. <laughs> so what's the benefit <laughs> of that? Well, you're going to um, achieve the number that you're selling the house for. So one thing is um, I pull uh, comps. 0.25 and I go, some might go further out, but I, I have them grouped. I am already in the house for the appraiser. I kind of lightly show them what we're looking for. <laughs> you got it. No. Okay. I, yeah. You don't have to go any further than that. I, you're basically uh, making sure the appraiser does his job or her job. In, well, uh, yeah, you need to point out, some, you need to point Absolutely. out some things that, that they might not know, you know? Mm -hmm. oh, and Jennifer, you, Jennifer, you know what's happening to you probably realize that if you're going on these appraisal uh, appointments, a lot of the appraisers that are coming uh, are not from Las Vegas mm. because the you're fooling them yeah. from other places. So it's it's extremely important to go to the appraisal and point out that the differences in perhaps the house versus the, you know, the house that hasn't been upgraded or doesn't uh, face the sun the right way or, you know, whatever it is that you can find good about that house that the appraiser might not realize because he's no, that's, what I was, that's what I was going to say to Max is that yeah. showing up is important because you have to talk about the house or the community or yeah. things that mm -hmm. appraiser might not know by looking at a piece of paper. Yes. You got right. It. Right. So it's important. Um, my computer is going to die. I need to get a charger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, go. Do you know where one is? Yes. Okay. We'll we'll, we'll fill some air time here so that you can go grab one. So, I mean, okay. so while she's doing that, I mean, that's what I love about the real estate business, is right, and and the reason why so many different people and so many different personalities can achieve success there because there isn't one way to do anything. And and Jennifer is going to start to realize this, right? And everybody has their own goals, right? If if she's looking to continue to do 25, 30 transactions, have you know, uh, a life with her family and her son, and not have to answer phones at Saturday and at two a.m. when someone calls, um, then that's a that's that's her goal, and everybody personally has that type of success. So I can tell you though that one thing that we all need to do, regardless of what level you want to be at, is to understand. You know, that's why they asked her the questions about. You know, where is your business coming from? Yes. Uh, we you got to reflect this year. I mean, this is a great time of year right now in December to take a look back at the last twelve months and the amount of transactions you did. One, did you meet your goals and 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 what you wanted to achieve? But two, if you were successful, where did that success come from? You know what sphere or what people you know helped you get there what activities and and where was your mindset and basically go all in i mean like go all in this next year because if that's what's created success for you this past year then go all in next year on the same things right until it doesn't work anymore until you start running into a roadblock and and and, and not producing any results but keep doing what's working sometimes like it, it a lot of times broke, early, it's not broken, don't you? Uh, exactly. I mean, early in my youth, right, I, I would chase so many different things in careers and whatever, and I never really mastered anything. Uh, and, and I think that was a detriment to my success early in my 20s. But everybody has to go through, right? Like we all, we're all young, we're, we're, we learn new things. And that's why, you know, age and time gives us the wisdom from our mistakes. Uh, but one thing I, I really appreciate about Gary Vaynerchuk, he talks about like, just go all in on your strengths, go all in on what works, spend 80% of your effort on, on things that work already, and then unpack 20% of your time if you have time, if you're not seeing the amount of success you have on the things that you're weak at. And so, you know, that, so that this is a time of year, take a look at back at 2021, where were you successful? Who helped you? Where did your business come from? And then cultivate like what, and then focus on the on on the targets for next year, like Jennifer is doing with the people that she wants to potentially do business with in the coming year. Uh, and you know, it, the formula is pretty simple. Uh, you just have to work it. I know everything's easy or everything's simple, not easy because you got to right. do it and take the action. So, Max, so continue I, on your story. 
Oh, sorry. Jennifer. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. I was just going to say, the and I mean this from my heart too, that I'm not just telling anybody, but Ruth and John are amazing people. If people don't know Ruth and John, they need to know Ruth and John because they're really good hearted people. Ruth doesn't have an envious bone in her body. She's there to help everybody. And believe it or not, I am too. So anyone that ever needed help for anything. And I even say to people, maybe this is going too far, but if you need my help and we don't work in the same company, like if you need me to do a showing for you because you're out of town, I don't want a referral fee. I want to build relationships, relationships. because we're all, we really are in the, in Las Vegas, one team, even though we work mm -hmm. for different companies, we need to help each other out. And it can't always be about the dollar because there's going to be a time where we all need help in some right. way, shape or form. Right. And so I think, when you give, it comes back to you. And I think that's what's happened for me. I know that's happened for Ruth and John. They're just the most amazing people. And, um, you know, the only reason why I'm not working with Ruth right now is because I don't know. I, I, I guess I just like the Berkshire brand, but I love Ruth and John. So, uh, you know, so be great. careful, Jennifer. You might make it official on this show here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I concur. I mean, that I, to Ruth's credit and to her detriment in her business, I've been telling her this for the last five years, is uh, she's you know given so much back to this community uh, and and really hasn't charged enough for her services and her. I, I tell I, I I'm I'm that engineer guy, but I'm I'm with a family, so I know and I'm a number cruncher. Right? <laughs> so uh, you know, I look at Ruth's business. And I go, you're probably leaving, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on the table here by doing it this way. But the result of what she's done, though, over time is, is she's built this community of, you know, real estate agents that really adore her, much like you, right? And especially newer comers that come into this business, like a hot mess, yeah. <laughs> like you are. And she's kind of, you know, Wait, she doesn't have any hot mess anymore. You said like you are. <laughs> <laughs> like you were. Okay. My bad. Uh, language is key there. Like you were. All right. And Ruth kind of, you know, because uh, she doesn't have any children of her own. I'm sorry to air out that laundry here, Ruth, but I think everybody knows that. Yeah. Um, she's We're created all her a, children. A, yeah, a, <laughs> right. a, a family and she's kind of corralled all the people that are looking to do better with their lives and in this you know, wonderful business we call real estate. So, you know, yes, so I concur with that. So, so Jennifer, I mean, I'm, what I'm hearing you so far is like, well, one, your son helped you sell technically three homes, right? <laughs> because <Yeah>. of his, <laughs> because That's of him true. mentioning that and that, and then getting a referral, I mean, the, from his action alone. So that, that teaches us a valuable lesson is like, you got to get your family involved, especially in this real estate business, yeah. right? I mean, corral your family to help you. If your children, if your husband, if your you know, sister, they're not, if they're not championing you, then you got to ask the question, why not? Right. And, and then really <laughs> that's a whole nother subject, especially around the holidays here, but, but figure that out because it, it could be another valuable source of uh, lead and, and, and business for you. Like uh, with Jennifer here. I, another thing I want to point out um, for me, I, I always answer my phone. I, it doesn't matter. Like if you call me at eight, nine, I mean, if I'm up, I'll answer my phone. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of agents that don't answer their phone. Mm -hmm. They don't respond to your messages. Um, I think it's really important communication for every relationship, personal work, everything Absolutely. is very important. And so I'm always, I always answer. And I actually am in contract right now with another Berkshire agent that just moved to Berkshire from, um, urban nest. And it was weird. She goes, I asked around about you before I accepted your offer. And I'm thinking, why are you interviewing me? Like, you know? And she said, I heard nothing but great things about you. And I said, well, that's very nice. And she's like, that's one of the reasons why I want to do the deal with you, not just because you work in the same company. She's like, I heard you're really great to work with, you're, you know, understanding. And even like on inspections, like I try to be nice to the selling agent and let's talk about it before I submit something to you. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I want, I want to be rational about everything. I don't want to nitpick everything, you know? So I, like I said, communication is key to every relationship and talking to people about real estate mm -hmm. is important. Right. <laughs> and, right. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's where I'm going this year is I'm going to network more and I probably will do a little door knocking if it permits. And I'm just going to try different things. And if, if I'm not successful with it, I'll just keep doing what I was doing, but I don't, I want to have an open mind. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and I was, for, like I said, though, spend 20% trying stuff, but 80% things that have worked already, right? Okay. So that, that you can continue to build on that. So you're not chasing three different things because it's time and it's money, right? Nothing's free. Like there's no, your personal effort is, is, is valuable and your time is valuable. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you're learning a lesson actually that, you know, it takes realtors maybe even a decade to learn, which is you got to build relationships with your fellow realtors. You're not, I mean, yes, you're in competition at getting the process, but you're, you're, they are another source of leads for you and prospects too down the road. And, and like you said here, especially in a tight, you know, inventory market right now where there's very little listings and, you know, you got 30 buyers bidding for the same house. The difference between them accepting your offer and someone else is the realtors, you know, understanding of you know, whether or not you can on the other side close the deal and are pleasant to work with or not. I actually have a good one to share. Yeah, please. Um, with Zillow, this old Zillow stuff. So I worked with a young lady from GK Properties on one of the listings that I had, and we became friendly. And I had an investor that wanted to buy a home. He hasn't purchased with me yet. And it was a Zillow property. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's going to take forever to get approved. If it's, you know, if it is, it's going to go through all this pipeline. It takes three days. I don't know if someone's really going to see it. You know, I, I got discouraged because I wrote in a couple offers on the Zillows. I have not, I haven't been successful with them, mm -hmm. to be honest. So I called her and I said, do you think this is a good price for this house? And she said, yeah. And she's like, I'll, I'll help you with it. And I was like, great. Like, whoever she's going to talk to or whatever. So, you know, she did end up talking to someone for me and he ended up not wanting the house after all um, because he couldn't paint the outside of the house. Cause so here's mm -hmm. another thing that I do go above and beyond. I call the association, like for example, like if it's an investor and they want to do this, that, or the other thing, or they want to know what, you know, the boundaries are in the association. I call before we even make an offer on I call the association. I talk to the manager. Can we do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? And then that way I know up front so I can tell them because I don't want to waste my time or theirs, you right. know? Right. So, you know, those were one of the things that I think is important to you. You just have to get it out of your comfort zone and do things that you probably wouldn't do. Like maybe someone wouldn't do what I did, calling the association, looking into it, it might require too much work for someone. I don't know, but mm -hmm. you need to dig deep and, you know, find ways no, to make absolutely. your career happy. And not, it really, I mean, my, the philosophy behind all that is you got to make sure that you make the transaction as smooth as possible and as easy as possible for the client. Yeah. Right. And if it means, you know, calling the association and getting all this information up front, it saves you time, it saves the client's time. And then the client's like, wow, this is a professional real estate agent. You know, this is something that, because, you know, that the worst thing that can happen is like get it under contract. And then, then you find this out and the, the, this, the buyer has remorse. And then now that feeling gets associated to you as a real estate agent, even though it wasn't necessarily your job to do that, yeah. right? But the, we we can't blame the 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 owner or the the buyer for that. We have to blame ourselves and take full responsibility for that. And that's what you're doing. That's and that's great. You're developing a philosophy here of accountability that's going to you know serve you very well in this game. And you've obviously been in you know a career. How well, only thing I want to ask you is like with your sphere of casino hosts. Um, you know, people that you've served. I mean, these obviously some of these high net worth clients from around the world, around the country, or uh, have you tapped into that you know sphere yet to look of other hosts or the cl the casino clients? Like, like the casino clients themselves. Oh yeah, that's what I that's what I've been doing. Like at the one. Oh, okay. You know, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I actually did a a mail a uh, email blast for my casino business, and I put in there that I'm a realtor. Got it. And this gentleman that owns a beverage company in um, not Bakersfield, but somewhere in California, close mm -hmm. Fresno. Fresno. I was just gonna say that. I'm like, yeah. So he owns like a bar, like a okay. like beer and everything. And so he called me one day, and I thought he was gonna want to book a hotel, like Resort World or something, because I'm currently the only uh, casino rep for Resorts World right now out of 200 reps. So I was, oh, the only, wow. yeah, I was the only one that got that one. And wow. so um, I thought, okay, he's going to call me to go to resort world. And no, he's like, I want to buy a high rise condo. I was like, oh, okay. You know, you know what I mean? So it just, 
Yeah. I think I'm fortunate enough that I have that sphere that I can mm -hmm. tap into that. And that's what I have been doing. So, but that's why I'm saying to everybody, don't get discouraged. Like everyone can make their fear, like whether it's the lady at a uh, coffee mean that you go to every day that, you know, you say hello to give her your card. She, mm -hmm. You know, I was at the doctor's office the other day. It was strange. I, mean, I went in the back and I went to talk to the doctor. I like went up to the nurse's station. Like I worked there. I just walked right my, I just walked in there and they're like looking at me and I'm like, yeah, I need to talk to her. And so the nurse like that was sitting down typing, like I thought she was going to be upset with me. And she's like, Hey, can you come here for a second? She's like, can I have your card? And I said, card? <laughs> I, I, I kind of was stupid for a second. I was like, card for what? And she's like, your business card. No, for real estate. Right. I go, Oh, sure. Are you looking to buy a home? And you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you'll never be, you'll be surprised where you will meet people. Like they're everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> people they're are everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, you know, the biggest problem with real estate agents, the biggest problem is they are afraid to talk to people. And I tell them, if you're that afraid, you don't, this is not the business for you. Yeah. You've got Sales is not the people. business. If you're after yeah. the money, go do something else because you've got to love people. And like you, you've got to love what you do and your community versus competition um, attitude is wonderful. And Thank you're you. a giving person and that you are going, I did I tell you, you were going to be a rock star? Did, you did I tell you that? He did. <laughs> and I was like, no, why are you saying that? Like I was scared. I was scared at first and I'm not a scaredy cat. <laughs> I, I, knew was, you'd get, I knew you would break through though. Yeah, she did. She said, you're going to be so successful. And I'm not going to lie. Like I like the whole Berkshire brand and everything. I, I, I do think it makes a difference. I know people will say, no, build your own brand, which I am doing and I have done, but I do, I do like the brand, but I do realize that people are buying me. They're not really. No, correct. Anything. Exactly right. Exactly right. If you look at all the big successful, um, like multi-million dollar listing agents, you have no idea who their brokerage firm is. Correct. Well, a lot it's, of them have their own brokerage yeah, firm. Yeah, exactly. A lot of them have their own, and, yeah. but it's their name. It's their group. You know, I mean, they, they're yeah. not advertising necessarily Berkshire Hathaway or, right. I mean, that's the thing of the past, right? Do it's, you think oh, anybody it, would ask Ivan Shear who he works for? No. no. And he's no. done six hundred million dollars in right. volume this year. Right. <laughs> exactly right. No, so yeah, I mean, and in, in the beginning, that's you leverage the brand right for your career. But once you start getting established, and yeah, people buy you. They don't call up Brookshire Hathaway and go, "Hey, hey, can I get a real estate agent?" <laughs> that's well, the, the nurse, the nurse didn't ask you who you worked right. for. Exactly right. No. No, she didn't. She she liked me. Yeah. Maybe because I just walked right back there and acted like I knew what I was doing. Well, I literally <laughs> like walked out of the room, the the you know the room they put you in, and went up to the counter and started talking to them, like because I didn't want to wait in the room anymore. <laughs> so you know we're heading at the top of the show here. I, I want to ask you, you know, what are your personal goals going into you know twenty twenty two here? I mean, do you want to remain at these you know two three transactions a month? Do you have any aspirations to go further than that, or what is what is it that you're trying to get with your real estate career? Uh. I would like uh, quality over quantity. That's the truth. Expand, yeah, expand on that for us. Uh, you know, high, higher price homes mm -hmm. selling. Okay. You know, um, it's not. It's not that I don't want to sell a three hundred thousand dollar home. That's that's sure. not what I'm saying. I just feel that I'm very good with high net worth people, and I, I hear what their wants and needs are. I have thick skin. So if you yell at me, I will be okay. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Uh, so right. I, I think I want to, you know, tap into that. That's the bit. Jersey in you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I, I kind of would like to do, I would like to do that. I, I, mean, I, want, okay. I was scared this year a little bit, you know? So I think this upcoming year, I want to tap into that a little bit. And I also want to do um, some more learning. And I want to become like in some kind of woman event or some kind of networking event for women. And that's, that's really about it. But that's, that's what I want to do for this year. I want to tap into higher price homes and, and honestly, California buyers, because I feel like if you can make a connection with somebody in another state and they trust you, 
they're going to send you people too. And actually, yeah, I it's had, a captive audience, right? Correct. So, you're not necessarily just working on Las Vegas people. And I think that's another thing that people just think, okay, just work Las Vegas. You could even do Utah, what, whatever yeah, it is, right? You know, you're giving away Ruth and John's secret sauce for the last thirty years here, Jennifer. For all those tuning in at the last <laughs> ten minutes here, uh, that's the secret sauce. Because uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's where people are coming from. Uh, you, you don't need necessarily market to locally here, uh, but yeah. And once you build, like you said, once you build that relationship with them, it's, just, it's not like it's very easy to cultivate a long distance relationship, especially with a realtor and not alone a personal person that you want to have a personal relationship, but with a real estate agent looking to do a home. And, and if you demonstrate professionalism and, you know, an, an easygoing personality and a likability and, and, uh, you know, the uh, ability to um, execute, you're going to have a captive audience among their friends and family and other people that they're looking to, to sell. So yeah, fantastic. Yeah, you're, you. you know, take a look at, uh, especially if you look at the transactions last year here, Jennifer, uh, on your higher, you know, higher ones, right? The two, whatever, plus million, if you're, you know, want to push that, see what worked really well um, and, and leverage the career that you had in the casino host. Cause like, I mean, that's your sphere, right? You're, you're around people who have money and are not looking to buy $300,000 homes, you know? Yeah, I don't think anybody. Which you, know, but you barely could buy one of those anymore. They don't. Spend exactly, the exactly it. right. And so, why not sell? You know, instead of ten, three million, three hundred thousand dollars homes, a uh, one three million dollar home. <laughs> all right, and achieve kind of the same results. Um, and then, then you get to work with the absolute audience that you you want to. And here's the most important thing, and this is the truth: you need to have fun with whatever you do. <laughs> if you don't, you're doomed. You're so doing, you, right? you need to have fun, what, whatever it is. And so, like I said, I'm not trying to say, oh, I made, you know, I know some realtors that actually tell me that they made a million dollars last year. Well, I don't really necessarily want to know what you made or I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to achieve that I made a million dollars. It'd be great if I did, but that's, that's not what my goal. You have to have fun. You have to have time for your family. You need to, if you decide one day when you wake up that, you know, even though if you're in a routine, like let's say you don't work Wednesdays, that you wake up and go to the gym or you do this or you do a cooking class or whatever you want to do, have fun with whatever you do mm -hmm. and make time for yourself because life's short. That's for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The the dollar value is uh, important, but not the only thing that should be important. Yeah. And everybody has their own goals, right? I mean, if you make a million dollars a year, but your family life is in shambles and you're miserable every day and you're a jerk to everybody, that's, yeah. not, that's not a good quality of life either. You know, so, yeah. well, pleasure having you on, Jennifer. Thank you. Um, thank you, you know, so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so it's much nice for seeing you and John as well. Yes. We, yeah. Yeah. We got to have you back on maybe mid year here, Ruth encouraged you know, just to, to one, perpetuate your brand. Obviously Ruth pushes this out to all the real estate agents too, as well. So that you'll, get a name for yourself just from this, you know, the show, but uh, also we're curious to see how you're doing next year, what, you know, works, what didn't work, you know, and if you can be open with that, the, the more transparent you can be, it helps everybody in the community kind of learn and grow. And, and the more we become professionals in this business, right. And, 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 and put <laughs> and push out the ones that are not looking to be professionals. I mean, the better the entire community is going to do, especially yeah. with the way things are changing, in the real estate business right now, especially with compensation, things of that nature, the need to become more professional is greater than it's ever before for your industry. So congratulations. I, thank you. And I, again, I'm Jennifer Belcastro with Berkshire Hathaway. I'm a concierge real estate agent. Yes. There you go. There you go. All right. And uh, Ruth, you have her number. You want to, do you mind us pushing out your number here for anyone to call? You know, like she said, she, Hey, you heard on the show, she's open to having you call her for help. Right. And anytime. Anytime, Anytime, as long as I'm up, if it's late at night, I'll answer the phone. If I'm up, it's no problem. My number, number is 702-271-3327. All right. All right. So Jennifer Bill Castro with Berkshire Hathaway for now. Thank you. Thank you both, Max. <laughs> You're very welcome. Ruth, what is happening in real estate this week uh, or a training? Yeah. Just a second here. Let's see. Well, first of all, I want to tell everybody that Brian Buffini is doing his bold, his bold predictions for 2022 on Monday at 10 a.m. And he talks about 
Now he goes and talks to chief economists all around the, the country on different uh, topics, and he pulls it all together with Dr. Jung, who is the chief economist for our real estate community. Uh, he works for NAR, and it's it's and it's a great way to start 2022 is to see what the economists are saying about you know our future, and part of what they do, for instance, uh, is they go and talk to people about um, what is driving our market in real estate particularly. And one of the things that is driving our market is when they look back and see the how many people uh, were born 30 years ago. Correct. Yeah, and then that tells them, okay, 2022 is gonna be a huge year for real estate because people are turning 30 and they're gonna buy homes. So they do things like that. They reverse engineer the predictions. And I love it because I know it's backed by facts. Anyway, um, that's one thing I want to tell everybody else about is we have a contracts class coming up on Monday from two to five. And it's all about the disclosures. And many of the problems that real estate agents get into is because they don't understand the SRPD, which is the uh, real property statement. They don't understand why the agency disclosure is so important and they don't uh, let their the uh, buyer or seller know all the disclosures and what they they mean and where they can go to get more information so that is a great class and jimmy Digg always keeps it relevant with the current times and most most classes you go to you you could go to it this year or two years ago and you're going to hear the same thing not with jimmy Digg. He keeps it current and I love it. And uh, anyway, you go to bee.vegas to sign up, bee.vegas to sign up. It's a calendar pops up and you click on this on December 13th and sign up. Anyway, uh, we always have uh, refreshments and if it's two to five, we have happy hour. So yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, everybody. Thank, you, every, thank you everybody for tuning in to episode number 703. Tune in on yeah. Monday for Ruth and her market update there. <laughs> I'll be here. I will be here. All right, Thank everybody. Thank you so much, Jennifer and Max. Bye. Bye. Thank you.